Welcome to Blackbriar Gaming. Today, we'll be looking at the 13th Legion, the Ultramarines, in the next video in our How to Build a Legion series. Hopefully, this is useful not only to those interested in the Ultramarines, but for all Legion players, giving them an understanding of the concepts behind army building in Horus Heresy, and an idea of what each Legion can bring to the table. I hope you enjoy. A quick note before we get into it, a subscribe and a like really helps us reach a bigger audience. So if you enjoy the video, please hit those buttons down below. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate link in the description. The Ultramarines, honorable, resourceful, strategically brilliant, and busy establishing their treasonous Imperium Secundus while the galaxy burns. The 13th are a really interesting legion to build. Their rules attempt to represent their tactical flexibility, and in doing so, create a lot of decision points for an Ultramarine player, both before and during a battle. They have the potential to be one of the most powerful legions of the game, depending on how one views the legacies of the Age of Darkness. I don't usually get into the legacies units in these build videos, but the Ultramarine legacy units are so good that it doesn't seem reasonable to leave them out of the analysis. So let's get into it. First up, the Age of Darkness box set. The Ultramarines are arguably one of the best legions to build when making use of the Age of Darkness box set. An effective 13th Legion force is formed around numerous units that support each other, working in pairs at the micro level and utilizing a flexible playstyle approach that can take full advantage of their Legion special rule. This means tactical squads, it means assault squads, it means support squads, recon squads, and veteran squads. It means that you'll have plenty of reasons to need 40 plus Mark VI Marines. The 10 Cataphracti Terminators don't gain much from the Ultramarine Legion's special rule or their advanced reaction, but as a close combat rock to hold your line or bog down an opponent's Death Star, these guys will definitely find a place. Alternatively, strap missile launches onto their backs and suddenly you have 10 of arguably the most powerful shooting unit in the game, the Fulmentaris Terminators from the Legacy's PDF. Now, there's plenty of third-party online stores or 3D printing options for those missile launchers, and with no official models for the Filmland Terrace, this is your best bet. One of the Ultramarine's unique elite units, the Invictaris Suzerain, are just insanely good, but they're also slow. A Spartan Land Raider gets them where they want to be with unmatched survivability. Expensive, but oh so powerful. You're always going to want a unit of Invictaris in an Ultramarine's army, so a Spartan will not be an uncommon sight in the forces of the 13th. Dreadnoughts are great. Ultramarines are into them, like everyone else. Uh, the Ballistic Skill of 5 means they make the perfect unit to shoot first and give the plus 1 to shoot to a unit nearby through the Legion's special rule. Uh, perhaps march them up the battlefield next to your Spartan and, and get them to work together to shoot at the same targets. Lastly, the Praetors from the box set. The Praetors fit nicely in an Ultramarine's army. Uh, I'd be very keen to convert one to be holding a Legion standard and representing our boy Remus Ventanus. Uh, Ventanus? Ventanus? The saviour of Kalf. Uh, Remus gets work done in combat, but most importantly, he lets every single, that is every single one, every Ultramarine unit in your army automatically pass leadership tests and morale checks as long as they have a model within three inches of an objective with his resolute planning warlord trait. That is the kind of warlord trait that wins games. It is absolutely outrageous. Remus is fantastic. Uh, so that is that. The box set is a great purchase for Ultramarine player. Uh, let's move on now and have a look at the impact of the 13th special rules. I've already mentioned it a few times, but for completeness sake, let's read through it. So it is called The Strength of Wisdom. It reads, when rolling to hit for a model with this special roll as part of a shooting attack, add plus one to the result of the roll if the enemy unit targeted by the attack has already been the target of another friendly unit composed entirely of models with this special roll in the same shooting phase, and if the attacking model is within six inches of a model from that friendly unit. This does not affect attacks, maybe the blast or barrage special rule. So just to simplify that down, what you want to do is have two units uh, or more, and you want to have one of your ultramarine units shoot at an enemy unit, and then another ultramarine unit nearby within six inches shoot at the same unit to get plus one to their shooting attack. That is 
to hit. Uh, so really good rule. Plus one to hit is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so what does this mean for army building? Well, you're obviously going to want to be favoring shooting or at least making sure your army has a decent amount of it to take advantage of this excellent rule. It also means that to make sure this rule is getting off, it's worth considering putting what we'll call spotter units into your army. Uh, these are units that are either cheap points wise, so you don't mind missing out on the legion rule benefit to activate it for those squads around them, or they already have ballistic skill five. So get no bonus from the plus one to shoot. Anyway, night fighting notwithstanding, of course. So rhino transports for tactical squads and, and tactical support squads seem like a really good choice. Rapier batteries for heavy support squads are, are really nice to sit in that backfield. Uh, dreadnoughts marching up the board alongside land raiders and land speeders for big units of bikes or squadrons of vehicles. Just an extra, you know, one or two scattered around your army to shoot at the enemy. The key is to kit these spotter units out with weapons that complement uh, the target choices of the unit they're spotting for and to make sure that you deploy them in a way that they can work together. Now, your opponent, of course, can try and take out these spotter units, but if, for instance, they're shooting a squad of 10 LAS cannons or, or 10 missile launchers at that one little land speeder that you've got flitting about, giving out a plus one to hit, you're already winning right? You're, uh, you're t making your opponent play your game and waste resources on units that in the end aren't that important. Now, I already mentioned night fighting, but it's worth noting that due to this Legion special rule, Ultramarines will, for the most part, and within 24 inches of their opponent, be able to ignore the negative modifiers of night fighting to their shooting while their opponent cannot. It's just about making the call whether your reduced offensive output is worth it to increase your survivability. It'll come down to deployment, your opponent's army, your own squad builds, and the mission. If you've got Remus on the board uh, with his handing out of pseudo fearless to any of your units near an objective, then taking advantage of the leadership modifiers from night fighting also becomes a no brainer. Uh, same, same, uh, one of the commands out of their right of war, and we'll get to that soon, also adds to their leadership. So you can really start playing the leadership game through night fighting as well as the shooting part of it. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, there's a lot of decision points for an Ultramarines player. And I think this Legion really rewards smart play. Uh, it is a shame, however, that the Ultramarines unique units get almost no benefit from this special rule with the aforementioned uh, Fulman Taurus Terminators already having Ballistic Skill 5 and the remainder of the Legion's unique units being close combat focused. Ultramarines, all about balance apparently, who would have thought? So that's the Legion special rule now that we understand what the Ultramarines are trying to do, let's check out their right of war. Just one, that's right, uh, they do not get two or more like most other Legions, they get one, it is called the Logos Lectora. Now it is a right of war that is both excellent and potentially punishing if you're not playing a smart game. So let's read through it very quickly uh, and I'll skim over some bits here. Now at the be beginning of each turn in which the controlling player, blah, 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 you select one of the commands. Now you can't select these commands twice in a row in, in subsequent turns, but you can choose not to, it is a may. Uh, the effects of this command are applied to all models in the army that have the ultramarine special rule and are an infantry unit type. Um, they last until the start of the controlling player's next turn as the active player. So what are the commands? Uh, the commands are full march, hold fast, retribution strike, and regroup. Now full march essentially lets you add plus two to your movement skill, movement <laughs> movement skill, I don't even know what that is, to your movement value, there we go, but you then have to reduce your ballistic skill and weapon skill characteristic by minus one. Now this is for all infantry across your army, okay? So you're moving really fast. This is probably, I think, the least useful command unless you're going all out on close combat, um, but we'll, we'll continue on. Hold fast. Now all models with infantry uh, must increase their leadership by one and also reroll all failed to hit rolls during a shooting attack. Amazing, so good, uh, but may not move or run in the movement phase, which is of course extremely punishing uh, and will impact your army if you're not careful. 
Then we've got Retribution Strike, uh, all models with the infantry, increase their weapon skill by plus one and gain an additional bonus of plus one to any charge rolls they make. Really great, weapon skill is extremely important in this edition, uh, but you do have to reduce your ballistic skill uh, by minus one. Lastly is regroup. All models that are infantry may reroll failed leadership tests made to regroup while falling back in any failed reserve rolls. Okay, so those are really good, uh, but can also be really punishing if you make uh, if you make some mistakes during your battle. Now the limitations here: essentially, you uh, take an additional compulsory HQ, and it has to be either a Master of Signals or a Legion Damocles Command Rhino. And then detachments using this right of war must take an additional compulsory troop choice. And lastly, you cannot deploy using the infiltrate special rule or enter play via any of the the odd things like deep strikes, subterranean, or flanking assault. So drop pods. Are no good now there is a lot going on there and there's a bunch of ways you can go with this one uh, the key is to build an army with a plan on how you're going to employ each of the logos lectora commands which turns you're going to pop them off in which order and the impact this will have on your units it's quite complex uh, there will certainly need to be flexibility in your plan to adapt to your opponent but going on with a system and an understanding of the impacts your unit selection is vital with the Ultramarines and this right of war. Now, I believe you can effectively build this right of war to be either balanced, shooting focused, or you can go all out on a close combat approach. The commands benefits whichever way you choose to go. The rules only impact infantry, uh, both from a benefit and a limitation perspective, so keep that in mind when we're building as well. Now, the balanced approach is the most complex and provides more decision points before and during your game, so that's what I'm going to discuss today. It's also more interesting to play in, and I feel closer to the tactical flexibility of the Ultramarines lore. The Logos Lectora commands revolve around either movement, shooting, or charging. So it becomes a game of maximizing their effectiveness at the appropriate times while reducing their negative impacts. Unfortunately, there's no deep striking or outflanking, which is a real shame, because that would overcome the crippling impact of the whole fast command. Uh, so how do we build this balance approach? Now, the key is to build an army that can outshoot your opponent at long range, uh, not hard with a large portion of your army hitting on two pluses and re-rolling to hit uh, with the hold fast special rule. You then back this up with a solid counter attack element to engage once the enemy closes in, including infantry and transports, which are free to move on the turns you've activated your hold fast command mixed with non-infantry that are not impacted by the Logos Lectora commands at all. For your shooting element, Fulmentaris Terminators were made for this right of war, uh, as they don't need line of sight to their target if they don't move. It's just, they're so obnoxious. Uh, other infantry with long range heavy weapons fit in nicely. Heavy sports squads with las cannons or heavy bolters. Recon or scout squads with nemesis bolters. Hard to in a few tanks. Uh, they can still move and lay down some decent firepower if you find their, their enemies trying to hide from you. As the infantry gets to reroll hits during your holdfast commands, it's probably worth using them to target units first and then provide the Ultramarines plus one to hit to nearby non-infantry units, such as Predators and Sakarans. Landspeeder Javelins kitted out in an anti-tank roll, a nice hit too. And then finally, you're going to need some tactical squads, uh, as is most armies. So a couple of them maybe to hold backline objectives and meet the trip tax and generally do tactical squad things. Uh, I'd put them in rhinos so they can move on to objectives in the early turns if they need to. The The beauty of this uh, this right of war is while your infantry can't move, if they're in a transport, they can because the tank is moving and the tank is an infantry. So you can, you can get around it and be a bit sneaky. Now for your close combat element, you're going to need to put your infantry in land raiders if you want to get them up the board in those early turns. Uh, one unit of Invictara Suzerain is almost mandatory they're just so good one unit is enough though uh self-restraint is important when playing the 13th legion uh, i would put this unit in the spartan uh, that you know to have lying around and you you can't go wrong big units of terminators also do work and really enjoy the extra weapon skill and charge distance they get from the retribution strike command just puts them up above where they are where they usually perform whereas the suzerain they, they don't care as much 
Uh, regular old land raiders will do the job here. You don't have the points for more than one Spartan. So regular land raiders for this big unit of Terminator will do the job just fine. Uh, don't forget you can put some pretty decent combi weapons on your Terminators too, in case they need to switch to a shooting roll. Uh, with your combi weapons, if you put the Volkite option on there, or one of the Volkite options, I think there's two, uh, you can shoot with that every single turn because it's just a minor combi option and you can shoot with your bolters in the same turn as well. Uh, so while they're not doing any kind of powerful shooting, the amount of shots they're putting out can be pretty crippling uh, and pretty significant. So definitely something to consider. Alternatively, uh, a cheaper option and one that helps to fill out the three mandatory troop slots you've got in this right of war, as well as providing more line units, is to pack your land raiders with the spoiler squads. Now they're not as survivable or flexible as terminators, so maybe a mix of the two units is the way to go. Add support your close combat infantry with dreadnoughts, who don't need to worry about Logos like Tora commands, and can pass on the ultramarine shooting bonus to the land raiders as they advance together. You've got a mandatory master of signals that is hanging out in the backfield, providing some shooting bonuses to one of your heavy support squads. Not that you really need it with all the bonuses you're already getting. Uh, does help with night fighting though. Never forget the master of signals gives night fighting to the unit they're attached to. Now you then just need to unlock the uh, right of war with your last HQ choice or one of your other HQ choices. I think Remus, Remus Ventanus, who I've already gushed about, is my go-to for achieving this. He's just so good, does so much for your army, and gets your right of war going with the Master of the Legion special rule. Now, the complexity of this right of war is probably higher than any other legions and quite restrictive for army building, so if you're a new player, it might be worth trying out something a little simpler first. Pride of the Legion is a good backup for the Ultramarines, who have a lot of competition in their elite slot, and now you're also taking Flamentaris Terminators as troops, which is just disgusting. Please do not take more than one unit. One is enough. Uh, do, not be, do not be that person in your gaming group. Now, there's not much else to discuss for the Ultramarines. Uh, that is how I would build out that right of war, that flexible approach. You can, of course, go all in on shooting. You can go all in on combat. Uh, the combat in particular is pretty juicy. Maybe a bunch of assault squads. You can't deep strike them, no, but you've got plus two to movement uh, in those early turns. And when you're ready to charge in, you pop off for that plus one charge distance. Not that you probably need it with assault marines, but the plus one weapon skill on them is just so spicy. It also means you can really use the other Ultramarines um, Legacies unit, which is that super special assault squad. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce it because I can't think of it off the top of my head, uh, but essentially that is a better army to take that one, even going down the close combat approach. Um, so look, what else is there to the Ultramarines? They've got a bunch of war gear options, three, okay, not a bunch. Uh, they're all solid. The Legatine Axe in particular is amazing and you'll want to take it wherever you can. AP2 at initiative is very rare in this edition, so always worth it when you have the option. Their advanced reaction, the, the Ultramarine's advanced reaction, synergizes really nicely with their right of war. It's shooting focused and essentially allows you to shoot two units at a target when, uh, when firing back, that making that reaction that means you get to shoot back at an opponent. So having those longer range shooting units that we discussed, those heavy sports squads, allows you to pull it off quite reliably and effectively. Now their Primarch, the Master of Ultramar, Rebute Gilliman, is a great choice for larger points games and generally favors a close combat orientated army build. If you're taking Rebute, uh, I'd throw out the balanced approach and definitely push that close combat potential of the Logos Lectora Rite of War. And that's how I'd approach building an Ultramarines Legion Force. Thank you so much for watching. How are you planning to build your 13th Legion army? Are you going to go with Logos Lectora or another direction entirely? Let us know in the comments below. Importantly, make sure to keep rolling those dice and getting hyped for heresy.